Okay, okay, let's see here. All right. So let me see. What should we talk about today? Let's see here. Oh, I know. Okay. Um inspiration. Let's put in parentheses. Change this to a little I and we need a mono spaced font. Well, that's a lot of them. That is a lot of. So one uh, courier new bold hmm? or courier yeah we'll go with that okay inspiration too big yes. There we go. Okay, so guys, how's it going? Um, yeah. I don't usually play around with the uh, the little paint program, paintbrush on Apple, but this is a little fun, or it looks a little interesting. Hmm. I have no idea what I'm doing. So, yeah. Uh, inspiration. So it's supposed to be inspiration lisp, right? Um, I want to, huh? I guess I could show you guys a video clip of something I made a while back where I made a tree where you zoom in and out and it's like this lisp program basically <clears throat> or I don't remember if it's a lisp program or a Haskell program I think it was a lisp program um, and I represented it with a tree because I wanted to make a tree editor and this was before this was actually right before I worked at Runtime Verification. Um, which was pretty sad because when I worked there, I was really excited to work on that. Life is kind of depressing sometimes. Um, so what I want to do is conceptualize some sort of like gooey thing. So I guess you have your screen, right? And then I suppose you have different kind of, I won't actually draw, you know, a solid line because they're just conceptually different sections of, of the screen I guess but over here I suppose you'd have like maybe your your language grammar or something let's see here is it possible to change this oh that's there we go okay so like over here you'd have your grammar right and then maybe down here, you'd have like your program. 
right? And then over here you'd have your configuration, which configuration is just another term for state, but it includes more than just like your your currently assigned variables or your heap or something. It basically is all your memory, including your stack, your program, your heap, everything put together. It's every, if you freeze a program as it's being redu like as it's being computed or consider your program a, a big expression that needs reduced, freeze it at any, con any particular point that is your configuration so if you start you know with a program that reduces you know 5 plus 5 plus 5 you know and then it reduces down to 15 that's your configuration okay it doesn't I wouldn't say it necessarily includes the grammar but it includes a it's like an instance of the program that's running now your program is essentially an instance of the grammar um, that's traditional computer science in a, in a sense, but you want it to kind of be explicit. Now, what's really interesting is if you can change your programming language while a program is running, you get what I'm saying? So. Obviously, the idea of changing a programming language and then kind of seeing how that affects a, a program before it's even running might sound like it makes sense. But to change your programming language during, you know, while your program is running, some people will be like, wait, what are you talking about? How does the, that even make sense? Well, you can do stuff like that in pure pro functional programming. And so, in fact, when you're changing your program as your program is running, it's called hot swapping. If you got purely functional language, that's actually not too hard to do. If you have something like Lisp, you can basically not only do that, but you can kind of change your language um, as it's running. Now, I'm not saying change from Lisp to another language, but Lisp is kind of like a base language for something that you can kind of edit itself. It, it kind of runs itself anyway. So you can kind of make a subset language in it, and then, yeah. So you never, there's always this base something underneath the grammar itself so the grammar itself has to follow some base logic system okay something computable maybe or it's structured okay so something like a base kernel or something so for me that would Im imply if i was going to design something i think it would imply something that either follows calculus of inductive constructions or some turing complete model of computation at the, you know those would be your base logic systems and then you have a grammar or of some sort and then you have you know your program which that all these things should sort of become blurred together in uh in, an, in a more abstract in a more sophisticated system our traditional understanding of these things should be blurred together. Just like in physics, you know, when space and time are blurred together and you're like, well, what's the difference between energy and mass and all this stuff? They're all kind of becoming the same kind of thing. Well, same with programming languages. When you have a more sophisticated underlying logic system, the difference between evaluating something and executing something and the difference between programming something and running something should kind of become blurred. They should kind of become a similar thing because when you're editing a program, you should be using algorithms. And when you're running a program, you should be using algorithms. And when you're interfacing with it, whether you're considering that running it or editing it, you're sort of using algorithms and changing expressions if you really think about it. So, um, yeah. What I want to do though it's kind of did what I did with Inspiration Basic. And Inspiration Basic was well defined. It was very well defined. And I defined it. In fact, I'm the one who invented it. Right? 
Now, where was I inspired? What was I inspired from? Well, Legos, Apple, you know. But really, I sort of copied TI Basic. I sort of made another version of Texas Instruments calculator programming language. Okay, when I made that. Lisp is, an, is a different thing, but it's, it's, it's not everything, okay? I want to make another another language, and I was going to call it Lambda++, but I, I don't know if I'm really going to call it that. Okay, I don't really know. Um, I was going to call it Lambda++ based on the Lambda cube, not necessarily just Lambda calculus, but the Lambda cube. Um, and I was going to make it with hashing and really sophisticated language. Like this would be Tim's insane and he's trying to make a programming language that's better than any other programming language out there and to replace every other programming language out there. So, <sighs> do I want to do that eventually? Eh. I suppose that that's not you know, that's not enough. I, I, I figured, you know, maybe that would be a good idea, but maybe it would be a better idea if I also made an operating system to go along with it. So, just to add to my sanity. So anyway, um, this is the one that I wanted to work on. Next. And this one, maybe I'll make an Android version and some other versions and try to figure out how to make a uh, that make get it on the app store for free by making some nonprofit or something. I don't I don't know. But I don't really sell it, so it's not on the app store right now. It costs money to just put it on there, and if no one buys it, and was you know or even downloads it for free, what's the point? So inspiration. Maybe people will like this. Maybe I shouldn't put it on the app store first. Maybe I should put it somewhere else first. Android phones or something and forget making it boring like this one I want something better I want something with its own screen that you can manipulate little games that you can make and things like that so inspiration it needs a clean interface kind of like those games I loved those games, like Human Resource Machine and 7 Billion Humans and things like that. Those are awesome games. And I need to make something like that. Something that looks like that for the interface. So, it has to be interesting. It has to have an interesting interface. It has to have a couple of puzzles built in to solve with the actual so and, and, and user software. Otherwise, it's not fun. It, it doesn't capture people's attention. It has to do that. Of course, it also needs to output some Lisp code. So, yeah. Program, configuration, grammar. So I have a friend who's going to help me. But, got to give him some test cases. Now, test-driven development sucks if what you're trying to do is design a GUI. Or if what you're trying to do is come up with a use or base everything off a different logic system um, than the traditional logic system, because you're that's not test driven development. That's you're you're first of all you're pro you're you're trying to prove everything, but you're trying to convert everything to a new proof system. So not only can you not test what you're proving, you can't even prove what you're proving in your old proof system, so, yeah, but what I could do is come up with some, I might be able to come up with some high level tests that says, hey, can you make, there are some tests, there are some tests that I kind of thought of, but they might include, I'm not sure, but they might include part of the test, you having to do something with a graphic user, with an interface. Um, or it might be a well-defined test, but it might be one that I'm not really sure should necessarily hold exactly as defined. So I might be, I might give a graph, 
So for example, you have like this, you know, I don't know, I don't know what cons. Okay, just just bear with me, okay? Cons, and then you have like, you know, just pretend you understand what I'm doing, okay? Just Apple, okay, say, yeah, I understand. Apple, of course, Tim. Apple with apostrophe. I know exactly what that means, Tim. Just pretend, okay? So, orange, all right? So in so in Lisp, you might not know this, and it doesn't matter. But basically, you have these things called lists, and I think this is how they're constructed. You basically just have like a cons thing, which basically means you have a head, and then you have a tail, and the head is one item, but then the tail is like another list. So yeah. And if it's just an orange, then I guess it's just a one long list. I don't re remember precisely, but that's not the point. Detail edge case is not the point. Point is, you'll have like this tree thing, and this thing, you know, tree, more, more things in the tree, potentially, whatever. And this thing will be a tree thing, and this thing will be, you know, I guess the tree thing too, and you'll edit change things, but it presents to you. It's kind of like playing chess. You know, you select your king. You, how do I do this? You're playing chess, right? You select your pieces and you say, oh, I wonder if I can, you know, take the guy who's right here. Wh where can I move him? Oh, apparently I can move him here and here and here. And then, like, the it automatically colors for you. Give me a color. It automatically colors for you. And it's like, oh, you can move here, here, and here. Right? You get what I'm saying? You guys aren't following me. That's not a knight, is it? Wait, one, two. Yeah, it is a knight. Yeah, it is. Okay. But you get what I'm saying. You guys get what I'm saying? These other pieces are not valid, but these green ones are valid. That's the point. So when you select, kind of like, you're going to select like two of these. So you're going to be like, okay, I select you. You, 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 whatever. And then it shows you your valid options. Okay, it'll do the searching for you, is the point. So, um, yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, another thing with grids. So, this grid was for drawing chessboard, but also, an output pixel screen should be one of the one of the GUI things, and it should also have a some menu, some meta menus, some higher level menus that basically say, okay, well you can you know output some Lisp text or something like that. So yeah. Mm. Guys. You know, I'm sharing with you some of my ideas and plans and things like that, but really, I wanted to post a video every day, and I don't know if it's a good idea, actually. it. I'm wondering if I should post one like once a week or something like that instead, for now. Or if I should just go silent on YouTube and not post anything for a while. And when I'm ready... I'll say, hey guys, I'm back. And show you something cool, maybe. I'm not sure. But I'm not really good at, you know, presentations. And if I am, I guess I probably just don't have enough time to prepare good presentations. I don't I don't really know. Um But yeah. You guys Um, 
let me know what you think. So, uh, this would be a program actually if you have a cons and an apple and an orange. I, I think that would be a considered program. A grammar would be would be like the, the like. I can't even type this. I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, so like a grammar would be like would be like would be like s exp or something. Oh come on, are you? You see that? It's in white. Why is it in white? S expression, you know. And then it's either it's either it's either a number n of zero, one, two, three, you know. Or it's 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 a a, a you know name of something or or it's yeah, that's it's a grammar. It's basically defining what your program language is. That's that's what this would be, but it would be in, in, obvious in the shape of like a tree, like this. So then you have to define semantically how that works. So, um, which means you need like a base base grammar, which goes under this, which would be your our our kernel basically. So, um, yeah test cases how would we come up? how would I if I was describing this as I was telling someone else to develop this and I was saying okay I want you to magically make this here's a million dollars um, I'd have to kn like know how to define what I'm trying to get them to make um, hmm. yeah I don't I guess I could make I guess if I don't know the hmm if I don't have a well-defined grammar if I if I don't know have any basis of things to go to describe what how the gra how the gra how the mechanics of a grammar even work in the first place so that I can even give them a definition of my language in a grammar. So if they don't even basically, if we don't agree upon what a formal grammar is in the first place and how it works, then that's when I have to basically give them test cases, I guess, for that makes sense. Okay, so I know what a well-formed Lisp program is, and then I know what the results are supposed to be, because I already have a Lisp compiler interpreter and all that crap. So I can use that as a test-driven system for them to make sure that their base kernel or base definition of a grammar matches it. Aha, hmm, now we're getting somewhere we are getting somewhere but then that means that i also have to make sure that they're not just coming up with something that works for that particular language i also have to make sure it works with a language that i redefine so if i change the grammar to something else <gasps> so the test aha i got it so this is like the meta configuration okay you take everything here put it together you have the grammar you have i don't even say you'd include your program because your configuration could be considered just a program that is being processed and a program just could be considered the initial state of a configuration that's being uh quote unquote reduced or executed um interestingly because a configuration if you really think about it you could pass it a natural number and now a configuration set is like the set of all states starting from program at state zero to program at fully evaluated basically so i guess the test cases would be okay i'm going to give you a grammar and I'm going to give you a configuration, and you have to give me the 
configure configuration of t plus like a configuration at time t and you just have to return to me a configuration at time t plus one basically so it that's what the test case could be hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe that would work maybe just maybe just maybe this could work i'm not sure but that would be really really cool and obviously test cases wouldn't prove all cases but it would basically give you a structure for an application i think so yeah that would be pretty that would be pretty cool i like that i really like that okay and then i have to think about it more but I think you could also come up with a like a test case generator thing, so it you could give it. You could you could come up with a program. That defi like that generates random grammars or something, and then you have like a no, but then. To say oh well, if it passes all this tests and the test generator has an algorithm for producing what it should result in then you're basically just writing it yourself anyway so yeah that's why test cases are weird because you can just theoretically if you just give someone test cases and you say write something that does this well they could just print the solutions you know I don't know I have to think about it more. Someone help me think. Someone help me understand this. But for now, I'm going to leave you guys. And I'm going to go. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye.